This textbook shows the kids a trilobite. And it says, boys and girls, trilobites make good index fossils. If a trilobite is found in a rock layer, the rock layer probably formed 500 to 600 million years ago. I don't think so. Somebody found a human shoe print where the guy with a shoe on had stepped on and smashed a trilobite. They asked evolutionists all over, how on earth could a human step on a trilobite? If trilobites lived 500 million years ago and man didn't get here till, you know, 3 million years ago and they didn't start, didn't start wearing shoes till 10,000 years ago, how could a human step on a trilobite? One atheist said, well, it's obviously. The uh, only an answer would be that uh, aliens visited the planet 500 million years ago. <laughs> oh, them aliens will do it every time. <laughs> Another guy said, well, maybe there was a large trilobite shaped like a shoe that fell on a small one. Now, there are some big trilobites, okay, but I don't think they're shaped like a shoe. Actually, the trilobite has the most complicated eyeball ever. Trilobite eyes are unbelievable. And this is one of the first creatures to evolve, and it already has the most complex eye, which it, just the eye is one of the most complex features you could have. Now, trilobites are not index fossils for anything, okay? There are all kinds of different types of trilobites, and there probably are some still alive today. Certainly, the Baltic isopod is still alive. A guy sent me a couple weeks ago, about a couple months ago, I guess, a whole jar full of trilobites from the Prudhoe Bay uh, treatment, water treatment plant up there for the oil uh, um, factory they've got, oil refining uh, rig. When they arrived in Pensacola, Florida, they were still alive in the jar. But I don't know how to keep a trilobite alive. I mean, you know, you give it mouth to what, you know, some resuscitation, but they all died, but we got them in our museum there. Somebody just sent me a large one that they got down in the Caribbean, about this big, it's in our museum, and it's, it was frozen. They said, yeah, I pulled it off the rock myself down in the Caribbean, still alive. They call it some kind of roach. Roach, it looks like a big trilobite. This textbook shows the kids a graptolite. It says, boys and girls, this is 410 million years old. I don't think so. Graptolites were found still alive in the South Pacific 10 years ago. So if you find graptolite, you can't use that as an index fossil for any age rock, okay? They tell the kids in school the lobe-finned fish is the index fossil for Devonian, 325 million years old. See that short leg, boys and girls? He's got a little bitty leg and then the fin. Ah, see, that proves he's evolving from a leg to a fin. No, that's a lie. The lobe-finned fish are still alive today. They're swimming around the Indian Ocean. And when they caught the first one in 1938, the scientists looked at it and said, wow, would you look at that? They survived for 325 million years. <laughs> it never dawned on them once to question the geologic column. That thought never crossed their brain. You don't question the geologic column. It is holy and sacred. You just have to say it survived for 325 million years. It's in the textbooks today. And they still say it's the index fossil for 325 million year old rock, even though they know they're swimming around the ocean. How can they be that dumb? This lady wrote a book about it, A Fish Caught in Time. She says, boys and girls, this is our own great uncle, 40 million times removed. She does look a little fishy, you know, kind of around the gills there. Okay. <laughs> You're going to be told that dinosaurs are index fossils for the Jurassic period, 70 million, or Cretaceous, 70 million years ago. That's baloney. Dinosaur bones were found here recently that had blood cells still in them. How long are the blood cells going to last? Here's soft tissue found with dinosaur bones. Still flexible, soft tissue in March of 2005. Here's fossilized human hands found in the same rock strata as dinosaur bones. Now, they tell you the layers are different ages. That's simply baloney, okay? Now, Charlie Darwin didn't like round numbers, so he said the Weldon deposits are 306,662,400 years old. <laughs> oh, how could he possibly know such a thing, okay? All over the world, petrified trees are found standing up, connecting these different rock layers. Petrified trees standing up. Now, how long does a dead tree stand up around here before it falls down? Hmm, five years, maybe ten years? Five million? Oh, no, not five million, that's for sure, right? But yet petrified trees in the vertical position are found all over the planet. I'll just flash through some pictures real quick here. There are all kinds of petrified trees found standing up. And they're running through multiple layers, and the kids are being taught the layers are different ages, and yet here's one tree connecting them all. I'm having a hard time believing these layers are different ages. That's what I'm having. Central Alabama's got a large coal mine with a whole bunch of petrified trees standing up, running through two seams of coal. 
the Blue Creek and the Mary Lee. Now they're going to tell you in school, for coal to farm, a forest has to grow, and then it all falls over and turns into a swamp, and then it gets buried, and then new mud washes in on top, and the coal slowly, or coal slowly forms from the forest that was buried. And then thousands of years later, another forest grows on top, and a whole new layer of coal form. So if you find two layers of coal, oh, that took thousands of years. That's what they'll tell you in school. That's simply baloney. We'll cover more on coal formation on video six, but if you look at the samples of trees found in this coal mine, you look at sample A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I mean, any freshman law student could tell you, hey folks, I think I can prove these two coal formations formed at the same time, very quickly. Within a few weeks or months of each other, that's for sure. Probably during the flood in the days of Noah. We'll cover more on that on video six. In Cookville, Tennessee, how far is Cookville from here? 100 miles? What's that? 150 miles. In Cookville, Tennessee, there's a coal mine with petrified trees standing, running. Here's coal at the bottom. The tree is coalified at the bottom, petrified in the middle, and coalified on top, where it went through a second coal seam. Same tree. By the way, why are coal seams generally found on top of layers of rock or clay? Wouldn't it uh, be a pretty poor place to grow a forest? Ought to be on top of soil, don't you think? Yeah. Polystrate fossils are found all over the world. In uh, no Joggins, Nova Scotia, there are dozens of petrified trees standing up, connecting different rock layers. People, scientists go up there and look at them and just say, wow, that's, that's curious. <laughs> no, it's more than curious. It's devastating to your teaching that the layers are different ages. There's a brochure you can get from our uh, bookstore. It's $2. It's got 30-some pictures of color pictures of petrified trees in the vertical position. Occasionally, the petrified trees are found upside down running through many rock layers. Now we really got a problem. <laughs> I've thought about this till my brain hurts. The evolutionists have two ways to solve this. They can say, well, Hoven, you know, the trees stood upright for millions of years while the layers formed around them. Or the trees grew through hundreds of feet of solid rock looking for sunlight. Uh, there's a third way to look at it. You know, maybe they were all buried in a big flood. Mm -hmm. How fast was that calf going? Keep that thought in mind, okay? <laughs> Mount St. Helens blew thousands of trees into Spirit Lake. Lots of those trees are stuck in the mud at the bottom of Spirit Lake. They're going to petrify in the standing position. More on video six about that. It doesn't take long for things to petrify. Here's petrified firewood. The guy chopped on it before it turned to stone. Here's mummified dog stuck in a tree. Turned to stone. They chased a coon up the tree apparently and got stuck. They named it Stucky. What would you call it? Okay. Here's a petrified cowboy boot with the cowboy's legs still in it. The boot was made in 1950 and the leg is turned to stone. Here's a petrified fish giving birth. It does not take millions of years to give birth. Praise God, okay? Here's a petrified hat. Petrified pickle found in a jar. The guy sent me the jar and pickle. He said, Brother Hovind, I found this in Montana in an old home. The house was you know, junk, the roof was gone, the house was falling apart. But he said, you want a petrified pickle for your museum? I said, of course, who in their right mind would not want a petrified pickle, you know? <laughs> Come on down to Pensacola and Dinosaur Adventure Land and see the petrified pickle. Here's petrified sacks of flour found in a uh, flour mill that flooded in 1910 in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Here's petrified toadstool. There's an amazing gem and mineral museum just south of Bloomington, Illinois, in the little bitty tiny town called Shirley, Illinois. You've got to be trying to find it to get there, but it's worth going to see the funk gem and... Uh, Mineral Museum, okay? Here's petrified acorns. This kid sent them to me. He said, Brother Hovind, I was, I was seven years old at the time. He said, I stuck these acorns in a bucket of water and I thought they might, you know, sprout and make some trees and I forgot about them. Next spring, my mama found the bucket on the back porch and the acorns had turned to stone. He said, would you like them for your museum? I said, of course. I come on down and see the petrified acorns. More on petrification on video number uh, six. So kids, when they tell you the layers are different ages, you tell them Kent Hovind said they're confused or they're lying. It is not correct. Those layers all form, nearly all of them, at the time of Noah's flood. 80 to 85 percent of Earth's surface does not even have three geologic periods appearing in correct consecutive order. Even though this geologic column does not exist, except in the textbooks, that teaching is what changed people in the 1830s away from believing the Bible to believing in uniformitarianism.